Kiyotaka Ainokoji starts attending Tokyo Metropolitan Advanced Nurturing High School, which boasts a 100% chance of college entry and employment rate upon graduation, though not much is known about the particulars of the government-funded institution. The school is divided into a class hierarchy from A through D, with the former resting at the top. Upon exiting the bus, he's confronted by another student, who he glanced at after nobody gave up their seat. It turns out she's in the same class, where one student tries to elicit introductions from everyone, as the teacher is yet to appear. Ayana Koji awkwardly fumbles through his, before Sai Chabashida, 1D's homeroom teacher, explains that students are to remain on the premises, which has everything they need. Instead of money, each student is given 100,000 points at the beginning of each month. One point is the equivalent of one yen. She goes on to explain how everything is determined by merit. While running errands, he bumps into the same girl, who reluctantly tells him her name, Suzune Horikita. The rest of the class forms groups, besides the two quiet loners. Kikio Kushida, who claims to want to befriend everyone, asks Ayana Koji to help with Suzune as he's the only one she speaks to. Asking her to accompany him to a cafe, she leaves as soon as she figures out Kushida's plan. Most of the class takes advantage of their points and ignores their studies. When May 1st rolls around, nobody gets any points, which is what their actions merited. There is a chance to move up in the ranks. However, D-class is at the bottom already. Another failed exam means expulsion. Suzune treats Ayana Koji to an expensive lunch. She explains how three of their classmates with the lowest marks refuse to join the rest of the students' study group. She uses the lunch as leverage. Now he owes her. Her goal is to rise in the ranks, eventually reaching A class. Ayana Koji tries to convince Ken Sudo, Kanji Ike, and Haruki Yamauchi to join their study group, all of whom refuse without hearing him out. Without many options, he decides to contact Kushida and use her as an ambassador to convince them. She agrees, but only if she joins the study group. Suzune adamantly refuses her involvement, immediately answering before he can explain. In their first session, the three leave after Sudo refuses to deal with Suzune in favor of furthering his basketball career. Ayana Koji overhears a disagreement between Suzune and her older brother, the student council president, stepping in before he can assault her, keeping up with Manabu, who attempts to fight. He stands down after realizing Ayana Koji is the student who scores 50% on every test, even the entry exams, which he claims is a coincidence. The two speak after Manabu leaves, giving pseudo answers to each other's inquiries. Suzune is, however, serious about disbanding the study group. Despite this, Class D overall performs better than some of the other first years, Suspicious, Suzune wonders what Ayana Koji did to sway the results. A few days prior, he noticed Sudo being harassed by three students from Class C after hearing about his potential expulsion. Before things escalate, another student, Honami, steps in and threatens to report the instigators. Sudo still refuses to study with Ayana Koji after witnessing the event unfold. So, he asks an upper-year D-class for copies of his first-year exams offering 10,000 points, eventually settling on 15,000, while throwing in a few quizzes too. Ayana Koji asks Kushida to take credit as she hands out copies to the class. Despite everything, Sudo fails by one point. When their teacher, Chabashira, goes for a smoke break before meeting Sudo for his expulsion, Ayana Koji follows her. He recalls her saying, everything at the school is purchasable with points and offers to buy the extra mark for Sudo to pass. The price? 100,000 points. Suzune appears behind him and offers to pay half. Though nobody in D-Class has ever moved up in the ranks before, their efforts might be in vain. They hold a celebration in Ayana Koji's dorm that night. When asked how he was able to change the teacher's mind, he shifts responsibility to Suzune, who becomes flustered trying to explain. Kushida leaves her phone in his room. While going to return it, Ayana Koji sees her furiously kicking a railing while cursing Suzune, fostering a deep hatred for her. When she notices him, 
Kushida threatens to accuse him of sexual assault if he reveals her true personality. She immediately switches back to her uncanny, cheerful demeanor after he agrees and says she can trust him. He wonders if it's all an act. Honami, it turns out, is the rep from Class 1B and is all-around praised for her help raising marks for the test. Like Suzune, she too wishes to reach Class A in the rankings. Ayana Koji, reminded of the sinister confrontation with Kushida, is still unsure of what to make of it while stuck in an elevator with her and Suzune. Before walking to class, Honami approaches them, greeting Kushida as Suzune goes on ahead and wonders if Class D got their points yet. Apparently, there's been a delay. Later, Ayana Koji meets with Honami, who begs him to pretend to be her boyfriend. She doesn't know how to turn down the person who left a letter in her locker. But when the girl shows up, he says he's just her friend. After, Honami apologizes for putting him in that situation. She owes him one. Class D's points won't be distributed unless they can clear up an incident that happened the day before. Sudo was attacked by two fellow basketball teammates and their friend from Class C. He attests it was self-defense. But without a witness proving his innocence before the hearing takes place the following week, it'll result in another month without points for D-Class. They post on message boards, but haven't made much progress. When Honami approaches Ayana Koji, Kushida, and Sudo's friends, initially suspicious, she assures him she's just returning the favor and helps search for witnesses. One of Honami's classmates receives an anonymous tip on one of Sudo's aggressors. While trying to pay them anonymously from Honami's phone, Ayana Koji notices her incredibly high balance, wondering what she did to obtain it. Ayana Koji finds Kushida and Sudo's friends in his dorm, allegedly making copies of his room key. Suzune notices all their shoes after knocking and almost leaves before revealing her suspicions about Sakura knowing something, a girl in their class who's been acting strange ever since. When they confront her the next day, she panics, drops her camera, denies knowing anything and runs away, unable to power her camera back on. Ayana Koji and Kushida go to the electronics store with Sakura to get the camera repaired. Wondering why he needed to come, it becomes clear when the clerk asks her to fill out the contact form. Ayana Koji uses his information to quell her anxieties. When Kushida leaves the two alone, Sakura admits that she doesn't see anything in his eyes, able to look into them, unlike most others. Back at his dorm, Kushida shows Ayana Koji pictures of an internet model they surmise is Sakura. He noticed her glasses were fake, which would make sense given this new revelation. Suzune seems annoyed about him spending the day with them for some reason. That day after class, Manabu presides over the hearing. The ruling is in Class C's favor, as their injuries clearly outweigh Sudo's. However, their accusations and the entire situation seem off. Ayana Koji forces Suzune to stand up and defend her classmate, bringing Sakura on as a witness. Her photo isn't enough for Class C's teacher to back off. He tries to compromise. Suzune refuses to accept this and is dead set on Sudo's innocence. Class C's actions were clearly premeditated. Manabu contests that one side must be lying. If neither can prove their claims, his decision will be made the following day, with more severe consequences. Even expulsion is on the table. Afterwards, Manabu runs into Ayana Koji and Sakura in the hall. He assumes they actually had a plan, insinuating Sakura's story was nothing but lies. When Ayana Koji defends her, saying he believes every word, Manabu almost hits him, asking him to prove it. Dodging at the last second, surprising Sakura and Manabu's secretary, Ayana Koji simply says he'll have to wait. Sakura finds pictures of herself, seemingly from a stalker, in her mailbox and collapses in tears. Ayana Koji and Suzune discover that the staircase where the incident happened is one of the only places in the school without cameras. They set up a meeting with the three students from Class C, placing cameras in the stairwell as a bluff. They claim that the student council was testing them and didn't bring it up. It works, and the three cave, agreeing to rescind their statement. Returning the dummy cameras he paid to borrow from Honami, Ayana Koji receives a call from Sakura, who's clearly distressed. 
she's being pursued by her stalker, the clerk from the electronics store. Before he can do anything, Aina Koji and Honami block off his exits and alert the authorities. Meanwhile, Chabashira confronts Suzune on the roof about how she got them to withdraw from the case. Refusing to answer, the teacher switches gears and tells her to be careful regarding Aina Koji. D-class is for rejects. Why is someone so capable of hiding his true capabilities there? At the same time, Manabu congratulates Aina Koji on his success, though still maintaining that it was all Suzune's idea. Regardless, Manabu offers him a spot on the student council as a secretary, though he turns it down. Suzune appears, looking as if she overheard. After failing to get Sudo expelled, the three students from Class C are punished by their leader. He demands to know the name of whoever tricked them. Running into one of the leaders of Class A, he promises that he's coming for her too. There can be only one ruler of the school. While walking together in the rain, Suzune stops Aina Koji and accuses him of orchestrating everything, asking what his motive is. He plays it off like usual, and she presses him, wanting to know who he really is. This prompts a flashback to him as a child, seemingly in some institution with others, as one child collapses. He tells Suzune he'll help her get to Class A, if she doesn't pry into his life. Summer vacation is in full swing, and Suzune continues to ignore Ayana Koji's phone calls, until she finally gives in and agrees to go to the pool. The night before, Sudo, Kanji, Haruki, and their leader, Hideo, met to discuss a plan to infiltrate the girls' changing room to set up cameras. After they all arrive, Hideo observes the pool area from a window. While communicating with walkie-talkies and overwrought hand signals, Haruki sneaks in, disguised as a janitor, and closes off the area as the others play volleyball. They have to change plans when Kakuru and his lackeys from Class C make their way to the changing rooms. Sudo runs in and confronts them to stall long enough for Kanji to escape. Hideo signals Ayana Koji, who knows about the plan, so he gets Suzune to give a speech about Class C climbing the ranks to reach Class A from the top diving board. This attracts everyone in the area. After Kanji escapes, Suzune takes the SD cards out of the cameras after Aina Koji informs her of the plan. He decides to push her into the pool after she denies having fun, provoking a splash fight between the students of Class D. Later, he sends her a group photo, eliciting a rare smile as she collapses on her bed. Chabashida meets with Aina Koji, telling him that a man contacted the school requesting his immediate expulsion. She'll cover for him. All he has to do is work to reach Class A. He refuses, but is forced to comply after she reminds him that he'll lose his freedom. All the first-year students are on a field trip, but it's more like a vacation, as they're staying on a luxury cruise ship. Aina Koji and Suzune don't believe it's simply a vacation. Apparently, there's a boarding house on an island big enough for every student. Ryuen approaches her about the security camera bluff and tries to manipulate her. When another Class C student, Ibuki, calls him out for something, she's stopped by his bodyguard, Albert. Sakuda practices asking Aina Koji out, before being surprised when he appears behind her, and she quickly runs off as Kushida notices them together. He tries to leave when Kushida stops him. Her demeanor changes once again. She accuses him of being wary of her, and he doesn't deny it. She switches back and admits she's lonely though he just mumbles a good night and walks off. They arrive at the island, where the real reason behind the cruise is revealed. The students must survive for one week on a deserted island. Class 1D goes over their resources and the rules surrounding the test. They debate whether to spend some of their initial 300 S points early on, as they are converted into class points at the end of the week, bolstering their class rankings. The class decides to find a place to set up camp first, while Aina Koji worries if Suzune will be okay. He volunteers to scout ahead with Sakura and Koenji, who vanishes while swinging through the trees. They continue down the path and stumble upon a cave, most likely one of the landmarks Chabashida mentioned. If occupied by a group leader, they obtain a bonus point, which can't be used during the test. In the end, 
correctly guessing another group's leader garners an extra 50 S points. However, if the guess is incorrect, that value becomes a penalty. If a class's leader is guessed, that class receives a 50-point penalty and loses all bonus points gained during the week. Ayana Koji stops Sakura from being hasty, covering her mouth and hiding behind a tree when Katsudagi and Totsuka from Class A exit the cave, almost discovering their position. They confirm the occupation, as Sakura deduces Katsudagi must be the leader as he was holding a key card. Meanwhile, Class 1D finds a spot close to a river. The next step is deciding who to make the leader. The occupation has to be renewed every eight hours. Kushida proposes Suzune, and everyone agrees. To hide her identity, they'll form a group around the console each time. While looking for resources, Ayana Koji stumbles on an injured Ibuki and invites her back to stay with them. Though apprehensive at first, she's surprised they would help someone from Class C, thinking they should see her as the enemy. Everything is going well as the group celebrates their first day's progress when they receive news that Koenji, who disappeared earlier, made it back to the ship. The class loses 30 S points, and the person who claims to be too sick to continue must remain on board. Ayana Koji has another flashback. A faceless man tells him that having great power while not using it as an advantage is for fools. On the second day of the test, Ayana Koji and Suzune venture off to other classes' camps. Class B's camp is run similar to theirs. They also have a member of Class C that was apparently kicked out of their camp. Class A occupies the cave under heavy guard. They refuse to allow them inside their operation. Class C is set up on a beach where Ryuen and his followers are partying it up with no intention of spending the whole week on the island. Ayana Koji notices a walkie-talkie on the table next to him. Since they spent all their points, they won't suffer the penalty for heading back to the ship. On the third night, someone is shown breaking into the girl's tent, searching Ibuki's bag for her cell phone. On the fourth day, Class C's departure is confirmed. On the fifth, Karuizawa discovers that her underwear has been stolen. Discord sprouts between the girls and the boys, the girls insisting the boys' bags be searched. Yamauchi finds it in Ike's bag, and he gives it to Ayana Koji to put in his pocket. When the search comes up negative, a pat-down is requested. When the class rep Yosuke searches him, he declares the second search is negative, covering for Ayana Koji. Later, Yosuke confronts him and confirms what happened, taking the underwear himself, as it belongs to his girlfriend, and it's much easier to explain. The trust between the boys and girls is gone so they decide to separate the camp in two. The girls elect Yosuke to watch the boys and move the tent, but someone needs to watch him as well. Suzune chooses Ayana Koji. Ibuki asks him who he thinks stole the underwear, as everyone suspects her, but he says he trusts her. That night, Ayana Koji confronts Suzune about her health, knowing she's been sick the whole trip, taking her temperature. The next day, he asks her to show him the keycard to confirm its appearance, as he's only seen one from afar, though he isn't certain upon seeing it. Yamauchi puts mud in her hair as a joke, though Suzune surprises him when she takes him down. She goes to a nearby waterfall to wash off. Returning, she takes Ayana Koji aside and informs him that the keycard was stolen. She stays behind while he returns to camp. After a while, she notices a pillar of smoke coming from the camp's direction. The survival test manual was set on fire, causing even more discord. Ibuki slips away during the panic. Suzune chases after her. Confronting her, she accuses Ibuki of stealing the card. When she goes to check her bag, she suddenly attacks Suzune. Finally admitting she was the thief, she knocks Suzune out and gives the card to the student who requested it. Ibuki digs up the walkie-talkie that she buried and lets Katsuragi of Class A know about recovering the card. It turns out they're working together with Class C. Ayana Koji finds and moves Suzune out of the rain and explains to her what happened after she wakes up. He tries to get her to withdraw as her illness worsens. Feeling guilty about losing the card, she refuses. He takes it upon himself to render her unconscious and carries her to the beach to explain the situation. 
On the final day, the classes are asked to write down their guesses about who the other class leaders are. They all gather on the beach. Ryuen suddenly appears as the only remaining member of Class C. Katsuragi thanks him for helping Class A win. However, Ryuen tells him to wait. Something interesting is about to happen. On the first day, Class C signed a contract with Class A, where Class C transfers 200 S points worth of goods to Class A. Class C identifies the leader of Class B and D, giving the info to Class A. Ryuen sent spies to their camps and spent the remaining 100 S points before the rest of Class C dropped out as he stayed behind. Ibuki's camera broke, so she had to get the physical card as proof. On the final day, he wrote down the names of the leaders, thinking his team would come out on top. But as the results are revealed, everyone is completely shocked. In last place, Class C with 0 points. Third place, Class A with 120. Then Class B with 140. And the winner, Class D, with a total of 225 points. Suzune confronts Ayana Koji about what he did. He knew Ibuki was a spy from the get-go, destroying her digital camera to force her into stealing the keycard and setting the manual on fire to give her a chance to escape. He saw Katsuragi on the first day with the keycard and knew the leader was the only other person with him, as cautious as he is. After seeing the two-way radio, he knew Ryuen was on the island the whole time and must have been their leader. He didn't bother finding Class B's leader due to their alliance. Suzune is floored, unable to believe how he pulled it off and not understanding his motivation for helping her. But before he answers, Suzune is swarmed. He already told them it was all her idea, like usual. Kushida tells him she hates that she doesn't have a hidden side, assuming Aina Koji would choose Suzune over her, though his response tells her nothing. He goes to meet with their teacher, who commends him. She reveals that his father was the one who requested his expulsion, but said he would soon leave of his own accord. Suzune confronts him, flustered. She considers him an ally, continuing to talk as he spaces out. He doesn't consider her or anyone else an ally. People are nothing but tools to him, and he doesn't care what he has to do or sacrifice. In the end, he's there to win. Nothing else matters. The students return to the cruise ship, only to find the vacation isn't over yet. Well, it hasn't really started, and apparently there's a second special test to be held on the ship itself. The students are put into groups named after the planets, eight groups of 14, with three students from both classes A and B, and four from C and D. The test takes place over three days. On the first, one student per group is chosen to be the VIP. The groups meet twice a day to discuss who that is and how to proceed. There are four possible cases regarding the test. Case 1. Every student receives 500,000 private points if everyone who isn't in the VIP's class guesses correctly, netting the VIP a 500,000 point bonus. Case 2. If anyone guesses wrong, excluding the VIP's classmates, the VIP receives 500,000 points. If the VIP is exposed, the two final cases still apply. Case 3. If someone guesses the right answer, they receive 500,000 points and their class gets 50, unless the student is in the VIP's class, in which case the test continues. Case 4. If the wrong answer is sent, the class loses 50 points, while the VIP receives 500,000 along with their class receiving 50. On the first day, Ayana Koji and Suzune show each other their email confirming that neither is a VIP. Ryuen appears and interrogates Suzune, still believing she's the mastermind of Class D. After denying that she's a VIP, he threatens Class D, boasting that he'll figure out the identity of every VIP. A war almost breaks out during the first meeting of Team Mars, Ayana Koji's team. Trying to come to an agreement, the idea of aiming for Case 1 is floated, but Class A refuses to engage with the others, vowing to stay silent the entire time. After the meeting, Aina Koji overhears three students from Class C harassing K, accusing her of getting into an altercation with their classmate and demanding an apology. Defending herself, K denies it, claiming she has no idea what they're talking about. Obviously shaken by the confrontation, later that evening, 
she breaks down in the shower. Aina Koji meets with his classmates about the identity of a VIP, but before they can make a game plan, Koenji correctly guesses the Saturn Group's VIP. Although the others think it was premature speculation, Koenji continues his streak of getting off early and finishing first to get the max vacation time. That evening, Aina Koji asks Suzune about Kei and whether they could use her status in Class D to their advantage when Ryuin appears. Apparently, he already has the game in the bag, along with his classmates' cell phones. Despite going against the rules, with them, he's able to check who's received the VIP email. Suzune turns down his offer to unite the other three classes against Class A, disgusted by his creepy demeanor. On his way back to his cabin, Aina Koji notices Kei, distraught, begging Hirata to protect her from Shiho and the other bullies from Class C. He agrees, suggesting she simply apologizes, and reiterates that they are only dating for appearances, a purely transactional relationship. This only frustrates Kei, who breaks off their fake relationship, accusing Hirata of not caring about her. Aina Koji approaches Hirata, who confirms his suspicions of Kei's history of being a bullying victim after she storms off. After four more deadlocked twice daily meetings, the three girls who were bullying Kei trail her, closely followed by Aina Koji and Yukimura. The girls confront Kei with her back against the wall, refusing to let up, while Aina Koji refuses to get involved. When they begin to get physical, pushing Kei over the edge, Yukimura tries to help, only to find himself on the receiving end of Kei's frustration, as Aina Koji observes. On the third day, Shiho and her lackeys bring Rika, luring Kei to a quiet area of the ship. Kei has a panic attack. Shiho figures she must have been bullied before and coerces Rika into hitting her repeatedly as Aina Koji watches from the shadows, obviously having knowledge of the meeting. He approaches Kei while she breaks down after the girls leave and uses her helplessness to his advantage. When he discovers a cut on her chest, he promises to protect her in exchange for helping him unify Class D to win the exam. Before the final meeting, Honami and Aina Koji discuss making it to Class A, even though they are in separate classes. Honami reveals that they can both make it, with points of course, just a measly 20 million will do. Aina Koji admits that he saw her total while handling her phone. During the final meeting, it's decided that everyone shows the email they received to prove they aren't the VIP. Even with the chance of someone submitting their guess first, everyone complies one by one until Yukimura hesitates, stunning everyone when he confesses to being the VIP, begging them to keep quiet until the test is through. Honami doesn't buy it and calls Aina Koji's number, revealing that he switched phones with Yukimura, implying he's the VIP more like the MVP. Kei and Aina Koji discuss the real plan. After determining Kei was the VIP, he offers that they exchange not just phones, but SIM cards too, which he obtained from Sai. Aina Koji then switches Kei's phone with Yukimura's. Honami explains that she was aware of their plot, but chose not to share it owing to their connection with Class D. Ryuin appears, revealing a Class D student falsely claimed that Kikyo was one of the VIPs, departing after threatening Suzune and Class D once again. It turns out the VIPs were picked based on the place of their names in Hirigana script and the VIPs associated planet group, which, once understood, allowed Class C to figure out the VIPs' identities. Back at school, the next test is a 13-event sports festival, themed Team Red versus Team White. Team Red, classes A and D, versus Team White, classes B and C. The festival offers numerous benefits. The top three placements get 1,000 points, or bonuses on their written test, and drawbacks. The worst 10 placements are penalized on their written exam. Classes choose who participates in the activities. Aina Koji and Suzune explain how the sports festival differs from the previous two special examinations due to intense preparation. Suzune wants to cheat, while Aina Koji feels they can win through regular means. Later, the class decides on selecting participants based on talent or volunteering. Suzune recommends pairing stronger and weaker students to win the events, 
at the risk of the weaker students losing out on merit. Susan A's proposition does not sit well with Kay. She refutes the notion and points out that Susan A looks down on everyone and can't unify the class with such an attitude. Kay seeks Kikyo's advice, who suggests combining both views, and the class agrees. But Susan A just enrages the class by labeling them incompetent. Hirata reconciles by polling the class on who had the better concept, siding with Kay. Later, Kay and Aina Koji talk about how he told her to oppose Susan A's plans and acquire Kikyo's perspective. He predicts there's a traitor in Class D, but refuses to elaborate. The class prepares for the festival, and Susan A quarrels with the student, still upset about losing the vote. Aina Koji wonders why she can't compromise. He deduces from a three-legged race that she refuses to acknowledge her own weaknesses and projects her disappointment on others. Aina Koji tells Suzune he believes Kikyo is the one betraying the class. He invites her to spy on Team White, where Suzune openly wonders if Kikyo sold information, which she denies. The sports festival gets underway, while Sudo inspires Class D to keep morale high. Riwin beats down Sudo in the top of the pole event, causing Team Red to lose. Matters worsen when Suzune gets hurt, after colliding with another student from Class C. Kei and Aina Koji suspect the Class D traitor revealed the participation list to Ryuen for Sudo and Suzune to be targeted. Aina Koji goes on to say that he never intended for the class to win the festival and that doing nothing is the best course of action. Sudo is so upset at being targeted that he hits Hirata and then flees, severely decreasing class morale. Aina Koji instructs Suzune to be useful in persuading Sudo to rejoin and use him as her own weapon, just as he uses her. During a short break, Kei and Hirata ask Aina Koji who the traitor is, to which he responds that submitting the leaked list was Suzune's idea. Kikyo convinces Suzune to go to the doctor, where Ryuen awaits. He accuses Suzune of intentionally hurting his classmate and demands one million private points for his silence. Suzune thinks it's a bluff, but Ryuen demands the points and for Suzune to grovel, giving her until the end of the festival. Suzune runs into her brother in the hall, admitting that she's aware of her inadequacies and will no longer bother him. While Suzune attempts to get Sudo back, he reveals that he only attended the festival to prove to the class that he isn't useless after all. Suzune insists that he shouldn't give up because it would only prove them right. Meanwhile, before the break ends, Aina Koji confronts Kikyo about being the traitor. She disputes the claim and speculates why Aina Koji didn't update the list if he was aware she had leaked it, which she believes would have caused inter-class confusion. She finally admits that she leaked the list and sold her VIP knowledge to Ryuen to see Suzune and Aina Koji expelled. Suzune attempts to persuade Sudo again, pointing out how they both crave recognition from others. She admits to seeking her brother's approval, isolating herself from others. Following her experiences with Class D, she learns that she can't fight alone and needs friends, to which Sudo succumbs, realizing they're more alike than he thought. Sudo returns to the festival and apologizes for his behavior, but due to injuries, Suzune and another student withdraw from the final event, so Kikyo and Aina Koji step in. Manabu and Aina Koji discuss the future of Class D before the last event, a relay race, and the latter indulges the former in a race to discover more about him. Manabu waits, despite being in the lead. As soon as Aina Koji's baton touches his hand, they both take off, leaving the school in shock when he almost beats the student council president. Suzune meets with Ryuen to give her response, with Kikyo present. Suzune confronts her about being a traitor and tells her to drop the innocent act. Kikyo agrees, and then confesses her plan to eject Suzune by any means necessary and eliminate those who know about her past. Ryuen admits that he had Kikyo supply the list and told Kinoshita to injure Suzune, then pretend to be gravely wounded. Suzune refuses to be blackmailed, revealing she's been recording the whole conversation, but so has Ryuen. Suddenly, he receives an anonymous email containing a tape of him urging Kinoshita to hurt Suzune. 
he compliments Suzanne and Class D's mastermind for predicting their every move, backing off for now. After Manabu announces his resignation as president of the student council, Sato timidly asks Ayana Koji for his phone number, implying she has a crush on him. Despite finishing last in the festival, none of the students were expelled. Much to Ms. Chabashita's delight, it's the first time she hasn't lost a student. She informs the students about the next special test, which will function as their final exam, paper shuffle. Two students will be teamed together and must earn more than 60 points. As a pair, even if student X scores zero and student Y scores 60, or both will be expelled. A mini test will be used to select the pairs, and there is a point threshold for the total points from all topics. Each class will create exam questions, which will be answered by one of the other three classes. The class that created the questions can request other classes do the test, and a lottery will be held if there's a duplicate request. The requestee and the requester will compete, and the class with the greater score will steal 50 class points from the other. Cheating will result in immediate expulsion. Suzanne reveals that Kikyo went to the same middle school. Rumor has it that a single female student, whom Suzanne suspects is Kikyo, was the trigger to an event that all but destroyed the class. Aina Koji advises her to expel Kikyo, but Suzanne feels she can turn her into an ally. Meanwhile, Ryuwen threatens his class, trying to weed out their class spy, Shiho. He decides against it when he learns that she was just being played by the mastermind. Aina Koji and Suzune join the others to construct a strategy in which some students purposely fail the mini-test, allowing the highest scorers to be matched with the lowest scorers. Later that night, Kei and Aina Koji discuss the circumstances behind Sato's invitation and he swears to defend Kay no matter what. The students agree to Suzanne's plan for the mini-test the next day. Of course, Aina Koji gets partnered with Sato for paper shuffle. The students in Yukimura's study session push Aina Koji to quit holding back given his performance at the festival. Aina Koji suggests preparing for any nasty tactics the classes devise for the test, adding that the school may have a mechanism in place to mediate questions. Aina Koji shares the knowledge with Suzune later that day, as the two contemplate keeping an eye on Kikyo. Aina Koji receives an email from Riwin inquiring as to who the genius behind Class D is. Suzune meets with Kikyo alone. The two wager on the paper shuffle math exam. If Suzune scores higher, Kikyo will stop bothering her. If Kikyo wins, Suzune gets expelled. Suzune has her brother witness the arrangement to confirm that it's a legitimate bet. Kikyo figures Aina Koji is listening in on the conversation and invites him to meet. At the rendezvous, Kikyo adds another condition. If she wins, Aina Koji will be expelled as well. He accepts, but wants to know about Kikyo's background, since she already suspects he and Suzune know. Kikyo was hailed as a top achiever, so much so that she wanted praise and attention which eventually stopped. To retain everyone's attention, she became the kindest, friendliest, and most compassionate person possible in order for people to rely on her and earn everyone's confidence. Despite her best efforts, this took its toll on her mental health. To relieve her anxiety, she started a personal blog where she gossiped about her classmates. Her friends discovered the blog and rejected her. Exhausted from putting on a front, she divulged every nasty secret, turning the class against itself. She hints that she has dirt on some of the students from Class D. Being complimented and understanding the filthy realities about others excite her enough to consider desperate measures. A monster born of the hunger for attention. Ryuan learns about Kikyo's wager. In exchange for their expulsion, Kikyo would allow Class C to win Paper Shuffle. Later, Ryuan interrupts Aina Koji's study session and questions vaguely about the email to find the Class D genius. Feeling at ease with the study group, Haruka chooses to form a buddy group with Akito, Aina Koji, and Yukimura, who requests to be renamed Keisei, and Aidi also joins the group, dubbed the Aina Koji group. Later that night, Aina Koji contacts Kei and asks her to take a key role in Paper Shuffle. The next day, 
K calls Kikyo out for attempting to push everyone and not caring when someone fails. After spilling a drink on her uniform, K apologizes and insists on paying for it to be cleaned. Kikyo offers to submit the exam questions and requests Ms. Chabashida delete any additional copies from Class D. Subsequently, Kikyo provides the questions to Ryuan in accordance with their agreement. The big day arrives, and Kikyo is baffled when she gets to the math section. Kikyo loses it on Ryuan for not keeping his end of the bargain, but he figures that Suzune saw through it all. It turns out that Suzune requested that Ms. Chabashida accept questions only from her and dismiss all others. Ryuan discovers a cheat sheet on her uniform, implying that he betrayed Kikyo by giving his class's copy to the Class D mastermind. Kikyo agrees to fulfill her share of the bargain, but threatens Aina Koji. She never promised to leave him alone. Ryuan is even more determined to find the mastermind after being thwarted at every turn. He targets K to lure them out of hiding. The next day, several Class D students are agitated by Class C. Suzune observes that Ryuan is doing this to exploit the mastermind. Aina Koji is led to a reception area where his father, whom he hasn't seen in over a year and a half, awaits. His father claims that their butler killed himself after being sacked for assisting Aina Koji in applying for school. Aina Koji left his family to pursue his dreams and live independently, something his father forbids. To make matters worse, he wants Aina Koji to sign the school withdrawal form and return to the White Room. Just then, Mr. Sakayanagi, the school's chairman, intervenes stating that Aina Koji was enrolled in the school on his recommendation and that no one has the authority to forcefully withdraw a student, prompting his father to back down. Afterwards, Aina Koji confronts Ms. Chabashida for using him to get to Class A. She lied about knowing his father. Later that night, Aina Koji apologizes to Kei for manipulating her and states that he will abandon his ambition to advance from Class D to Class A leaving that to Suzune and Hirata, and concludes the chat by claiming that this will be their final conversation. Ryuin intrudes on Class D, causing Koenji to leave. Ryuin and his lackeys follow. More Class C students confront Koenji in the courtyard, as Ryuin begins provoking him by damaging Koenji's things. Arisu and other Class A officers arrive to see the brawl. Koenji deduces that Ryuin is looking for the Class D mastermind, and attempts to defuse the situation by declaring that he's uninterested in the interclass battle and does whatever he wants. Ryuin calms down, but Arisu starts taunting him. As everyone departs, Ryuin threatens Suzune and Class D and proclaims that his hunt for the mastermind is almost over. Ryuin outlines his strategy to catch the mastermind using K as bait. He entices her to a secluded site, tying her up, he pressures her to uncover the mastermind or expose her previous bullying in order to damage her reputation. Kei continues to defend Aina Koji and argues for Ryuin to let her go since it proves his vulnerability in exploiting people to achieve his goal. Ryuin begins tormenting her upon hearing this, but Kei keeps her cool, claiming that there is no mastermind. Meanwhile, Aina Koji agrees to attend karaoke with his new pals. Ryuin tortures Kei further, claiming that the mastermind set Kei up during the special test on the ship when she was lured to where Shiho and Rika bullied her. Aina Koji abandons the karaoke idea and instead approaches Miss Chabashida, pleading with her to stop Ryuin from injuring Kei for Class D to advance. She agrees when Aina Koji enlists Manabu's assistance in eliminating Ryuin in exchange for Suzune entering the student council. Aina Koji finally comes to Kei's aid, exposing himself as the mastermind. Ryuin threatens Aina Koji with physical harm and orders his subordinates to attack. Aina Koji quickly disposes of his lackeys, surprising both Ryuin and Kei. He declares that he orchestrated the entire conflict, duping Ryuin. Upon hearing this, Ibuki takes a shot at Aina Koji, but is knocked out. Ryuin and Aina Koji engage in a full-fledged battle as they tease each other about who will win. Aina Koji, deadpan and unflinching, calmly says he's already won. Ryuin's whole ideology is based on the idea that violence is genuine power 
continuing his assault. Ayana Koji responds by claiming he doesn't feel anything. When he gains control, he viciously beats Ryuin's face, instilling terror, despite Ryuin insisting that he's never felt fear. Ayana Koji rushes to console Kei, reiterating his promise to save her no matter what. Everything went according to his plan. Now, she needs him even more. Ryuin reconsiders his decisions after losing to Ayana Koji, which Ibuki dislikes because he's become submissive. Kei is taken aback by the fact that her feelings for Ayana Koji have gotten stronger. Sato tells Kei that she's confessing her feelings to Ayana Koji in two days, on Christmas, much to Kei's confusion given her feelings for him, only becoming more confused after he calls asking about Sato's interests later that night. The next day, Ayana Koji informs Suzune that her brother wants her to join the student council and feels it would help her overall. Later that day, Ayana Koji and Ryuin meet and discuss how he saved him by accepting responsibility for the gymnasium kidnapping. Ayana Koji predicts that Class D will reach Class C, only to be downgraded after reaching his goal to expel Kikyo the following term. Ayana Koji and Sato meet on Christmas Day, with Kei and Hirata joining them as a double date. When Kei and Hirata leave, Sato confesses to Ayana Koji, who rejects her since he has never had feelings for anybody. Kei watches from the bushes and asks if he sees everyone as tools. He neither confirms nor denies it. She offers him a gift, which Ayana Koji reciprocates by giving her cold medicine. As the two walk back, he calls her by her given name for the first time and wonders whether he'll ever stop thinking of others as pawns. As Kei and Ayana Koji part ways, Arisu pursues him and explains that she knows him from the White Room and that she intends to take him down. He'd like to see her try. Thank you for sticking until the end. Subscribe for more videos like this.